So on the subnet 192.168.1.128.26, we've been told to configure the router with the last IP address in the, the subnet. Now the next subnet is 192. So the broadcast address for the subnet will be 191, which means that this router can be configured with 190. Have a look at the previous videos in this series if you're not sure how I worked that out. So IP address 192.168.1. 192 is the next subnet. 191 is the broadcast. 190 is the last IP address in the subnet. Subnet mask is that. And we know that from our previous calculations. The switch needs to use the second IP address in the subnet. The router is configured with 190. So the switch, I'll change the name to switch two, will simply use IP address 192.168.1.189. So one less than the router. No shut of the interface. So ping 192.168.1.189. That's our local IP address. Can we ping the router? Yes, we can. I'll also configure a default gateway on the switch pointing to the router. Switch is configured. So the switch once again is using 189. The DNS server should use 188. One less than the switch. So static IP address of the DHCP server is 192.168.188. Subnet mask is 255.255.255.192. Default gateway is the router 192.168.1.190. Again, that's the IP address of the router. DNS server will be Google. So on the server, can we ping the router? Type that right. Yes, we can. Can we ping the switch? Yes, we can. Can we ping the DNS server? Not at the moment because we need to configure the serial interface of the router. But now let's configure the DHCP server. So DHCP, I'll enable the DHCP service. Default gateway is gonna be 192, so, one, so 192.168.1.190. DNS server is Google. IP addresses that we'll allocate are 192.168.1. Now you need to be careful. The first host is one more than the subnet. So it's 129. Maximum number of hosts I'll allocate is 50. And I'll save that configuration. You could allocate more IP addresses in your pool or less if you wanted to. So, so for instance, only allocate 10. Just depends how many IP addresses in your subnet you wanna have for static IP addresses, how many IP addresses you want for dynamic IP addresses. So on the PC, IP config, IP address has been allocated. Ping 192.168.1.190. That's the router, that's the switch, that's the DNS server. What about PC5? Just do one more here, IP config. IP address has been allocated. So can we ping the router? Yes, we can. What about switch? Yes, we can. What about DNS server? Yes, we can. We won't be able to ping 192.168.1.1 PC and the other subnet because we still need to configure this serial link. So let's configure the serial link the IP address of this router on the serial interface is gonna be one more than the subnet. So show IP interface brief. This serial interface needs to be configured with IP address 192.168.1. Subnet is 192, so first IP address will be 193 with that subnet mask. So can we ping 192.168.193? It won't work at this point because we need to configure the other side. So on this router, show IP interface brief, 
we still need to configure the serial interface. It's currently down. So no shut of that. IP address will be 192.168.1. And this is a little bit more difficult. To work out the broadcast for the subnet, again, you just populate the host portion with binary ones. And what you'll notice is it's full of ones. So that would equal 255. So one less than the broadcast is 254. So 254 subnet mask is that. No shut of the interface again. So show IP interface brief. According to this, it's stalled down. Let's make sure that I've configured it right. Show IP interface brief. I may have connected the wrong serial interface in this network and that looks like what I've done, wrong serial interface. So what I'll do is delete that serial interface. I'll fix it in your lab so you don't have that problem. S that serial should be connected to that serial. So show IP interface brief. This interface is up, up. So can we ping 192.168.1.254? Yes, we can. So router two can ping the internet router. So hopefully these PCs can now ping the internet, which they can. Notice they can ping cisco.com as an example, and they can ping facebook.com. So going to the web browser on PC3, can this PC get to cisco.com? Yes, it can. Can it get to facebook.com? Yes, it can. What about PC5? Web browser on PC5. Can we get to cisco.com? Yes, we can. Can we get to facebook.com? Yes, we can. We can access these servers on the internet. We've had to do quite a lot here. As a last test, can the PCs in the one subnet ping PCs in the other subnet. So can we ping 192.168.1.1? Yes, we can. What about 1.2? Yes, we can. And if we trace to that, we are essentially sending traffic to router two, then to the internet router, then to router one, and then to the PC in the other subnet. Okay, so this is quite a complex lab. We had to do a lot of things here, but I'm hoping it's helped you understand subnetting and where you use subnetting and how to use subnetting in a practical lab.